Welcome back. I hope that you took a bit of a breather um, and you just thought about everything that we have just spoken about. So please don't forget um, how to calculate your ratios. Don't forget how to calculate um, everything that is given there. A quick shout out to Liberty, our sponsor, for helping us get all this content to you. Um, and please don't forget to download your Tenfold Education app and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel um, as well. So we are doing yet another um question that requires that we know exactly what to do when we are given a situation whether we are tiling a braying area we are tiling a swimming pool area we are paving um we are um, calculating um how many bricks are going to be needed for whatever and so on and so forth so i'm going to give you a quick illustration first and then i'm going to do a, a bit of an example of how, what to do when we come to such questions okay so let's see um so whenever we are building a house or we tiling a floor or we are painting we would be given a scenario. So what I want you to always remember, if this is the wall of the house and the wall of the house has a window, has a door, and then has another window. Okay. And we are going to think of the two windows as identical. So, meaning that they are the same. What I want you to remember when it comes to such scenarios, and we are then asked how we are going um, or, or how many bricks are needed for here or how, many, how, how much paint we're going to need. So, let's make an example um, using paint, you know, for this wall. We need to paint this wall. So first things first that we always need to remember um, when it comes to, 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 to painting a wall like this is that I'm not going to paint my windows and I'm not going to paint my door. Okay, so I need to remember to always um, find the area of everything and subtract them. So in this particular case, I would find, so, 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 so this, I want the area to be painted for example area to be painted okay i would first find the area of the wall so the total area of the wall and then i would subtract um the following i would then subtract the area of the windows and multiply that by two and then i would subtract the area of the door okay this is an example that I'm just giving you and that will give you the area to be painted the reason why I'm doing this is because I have a similar scenario in this question which is always an issue so in this question it says that the kitchen and the bathroom should be tiled the floor tile dimension um, is 500 millimeters times 500 millimeters so i already know that this tile is a square because the dimensions are the same when buying tiles you need to buy five percent more in case it breaks you know a tiling company charges 8186.9 cents um for labor and can get the tiles at 249.90 per box so that is all the information that I'm given. So I need to remember that area is length times width. And then I need to note that all the items like the bath, the stoves, the cupboards, etc., are movable items. And tiling will be done on the spaces where they need to be placed. So in this particular situation, I am not going to subtract anything because I've already been told that these items are movable. And that's the reason why in the other scenario, I said I need to show you that there's a, an instance where we do subtract and there's an instance where we do not subtract. So this question is very straightforward. What makes it straightforward? It's straightforward 
um, because we know that we are not going to have issues um, when it comes to this. So now we are asked to calculate um, the, the, the total area that is going to be tiled. So in this particular instance, if you look at it, we are not given enough information for us to know um, how big the area to be tiled is going to be. Meaning that there's probably um, an addendum for this particular question. So, so in this particular question, and look at that nine marks, you know, um, and that nine marks is, is the proof and it's the evidence that we need when it comes to that particular thing. And then it says the building manager made the statement that 150 tiles are needed to complete the tiling for the kitchen. Remember that in this particular question, once you have proven um, that it's 150 tiles or maybe a bit less than that, your answer is going to come from you saying, yes, the statement is valid. No, the statement is not valid. That's where we're getting a lot of our marks when we come to a question like that. So please don't forget when it comes to that. And then it says here, the tiling company charged 24795 for the cost of tiles and the labor. So whenever we're doing our calculations, we need to remember that sometimes we will be given the cost for labor. Sometimes we will not be given the cost um, for labor. So whenever we are given the cost for labor, we must not forget to always um, calculate it as it is given, okay? And then it says here, the manager of the low-cost housing claims that the tiling company's quotation is exceptionally high. Verify the necessary calculations whether the manager's claim is valid or not. So the reason why a question like this is important is that you always need, um, you need to remember... If you don't know, now you will know. There's something called continuous assessments um, when it comes to such questions. What does continuous assessment mean? It means that even if you got the previous answer incorrect, you taking that answer that makes sense and bringing it down to the next question will give you method marks. So if you are calculating something and it's not really making sense to you and you've spent too much time on it, you need to bring down your answer to the next um, question. And as you go down, you will be receiving method marks for that. So don't panic when it comes to a question like this. I find that sometimes learners um, will start to panic. And when you start panicking, when you have a question that looks like this, then you, you, you forget to then bring down all your answers. So no matter how your answers are looking at that particular time, always bring it down to the next question. Always bring it down to the next question, which makes it quite easy for you um, as well. So let me show you something. So for, for, for example, um, if we were asked to calculate um, the total area that needs to be tiled, and we went and we calculated the, the, the particular area that needs to be tiled. Um, for example, we calculated it and we, 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 we found um, that the area was length times breadth. And we found that the length of the room was 4 meters. And we found that the breadth of the room was 3 meters. And we got that as 7 meters square. This 7, no sorry, oh, that is 12 meters square. This 12 meter square, whether correct or not, whether correct or not, you still can bring it down and you can still come down and verify using it. Okay. And if you were using a calculation like that, it's a how many type of question. So how many... We know we are using total area divided by area of one tile. Okay, let's just fix that. Total area divided by area of one tile. Whatever the answer you get here, um, in terms of how many tiles you use, you carry on with the very same answer. Okay, 
When you carry on with the very same answer, you will continue to get method marks. So do not give up when you feel like a question is hard. Do not give up when you feel like, I don't understand what's going on here. You carry on with the same answer and you carry on um, with the same answer. I hope that this session was very helpful to you. Remember to not give up. Remember you go in there using a calculator um, and that you will do brilliantly as long as you study way in advance. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll definitely see you next time.